Seamus, congratulations on being from Limerick because, uh, you know, you guys are kings of the world. Listen, it's, uh, it, it's, it's hard to believe. It's, it's incredible to believe uh, four in a row. Uh, it has actually happened in Limerick. It's, uh, it's bananas. And to hear the likes of Tommy Walsh talking about it and the likes of the Kilkenny players that have had eight All-Irelands, it's, ju- it's just it's wild to think that Limerick are in the same conversation. Just considering what we've endured, what we endured in the 90s for such incredible teams, like really, really talented teams couldn't do it. Uh, we had a go in the 2000s and, and, and the, I suppose the teens, but like this team, they're just they're just phenomenal. Like, and then I I just I was I was standing there with my hands in my head at the, the full time whistle yesterday, just really, really taking it in and just trying to appreciate how lucky we are to be represented by the the group of the group of men and, and women in the Limerick setup. Um, they're just they're, they're, an, they're an exceptional bunch and uh, you're just in, just incredibly proud of them it, it's, um, it's funny but generally when any sporting team or person exerts such dominance over their rivals there's like a brooding sense of oh we're sick of this but actually I don't really feel that from the general public yet I mean I'm sure Tip fans maybe might feel a little bit different than some Clare fans and some but even the Kilkenny fans are like I, what, like what are we yeah, we didn't nearly beat them we weren't we weren't like it wasn't like something happened they were like oh we're so close to them it was just it, there was an I, and there was a big Kilkenny crowd who stayed particularly on the hill to watch the presentation which is unusual I think I mean I, I don't remember it but there's just this kind of everybody wants to soak in the level of achievement and greatness we're seeing it's, so that was that was a credit to the performance. The second half performance yesterday was was worldly. It was it was incredible. And then obviously the the huge crowd that stayed around. It was history. It was history for like the only the, there's only three teams that have done this to win four in a row, and one of them was in the forties. So you know the, you're talking about that in, incredible Kilkenny team from 06 to 09 and, and what it took to stop them in, to, in 2010 from Tipperary was you know arguably the greatest all Ireland final that we've ever seen so you know Limerick are now in that conversation and I think it was respect for the performance it was respect for the history that probably brought that about like I've I, I, you know I've followed the, the the media cycle for the last couple of years around this Limerick team th- there's fatigue I, I, I there's no doubt about that like uh, I know that people would would, would prefer uh, you know something different and change is good in, in sport you know for, for supporters like ourselves we're, we're really just trying to appreciate what it lasts but I really do think that it was it was the performance it was the second half uh, and just the sheer the sheer class of it that uh, you know it's, it's exceptionally difficult to do anything but sit back and appreciate the, the quality uh, and the skill and and the mental fortitude uh, to be six points down in the first half and to produce what they did in the second half. Um, it, it, it's right. I, I think it's only right that you, you sit back and you, you apply that. Could you have possibly foreseen this, Seamus, in the in a couple of years before, say, 2018? Because I was chatting to Eamon Cregan last week and he referenced the lift in the Treaty Academy that was set up the Mary I win in 2016 the first ever Mary I, Mary I skipping cup win and at that point I think Eamon Cregan did an interview in 2016 where he said it's an absolute disgrace the gap between 73 and then could you could you have seen this around the corner like I know these players that the Lynches and the uh, Hayes were coming around the corner but did you ever think this would come about so I don't know anybody who could possibly have predicted this level of dominance because so as good as as good as the team was and in 2018 I knew that there was something incredible brewing in Emory so we had this exceptional talent pipeline uh, we had just had Kyle Hayes had come into the panel at just at 18 years of age had come in from a, an All-Ireland minor win winning All-Ireland minor, minor titles was still brand new to us like uh, in Limerick that uh, the lifting Limerick strategy headed by Joe McKenna was starting to bear fruit underage and okay great there's 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 green shoots coming um, and when we won in 18, I said, you know, it's going to be impossible to stop this team. And when I, so I retired in, at the end of 18, fully aware uh, that I was, you know, I, I was sitting out on Ireland um, with this team that was there. And it's a, it's a combination of the exceptional talent, Paul Kinnerk, uh, and you know, Keen mentioned him in his, in his speech yesterday, he's just, his hurling knowledge, his, his, his training, um, his ability to convey you know, just just the 
the importance of discipline, structure, shape, and how they how he wanted the, the, the game played, and then the strengths of the players then were able to execute it. John Kylie's ability to to just I suppose to lead the ship, be an incredible figurehead, uh, make good decisions, uh, and trust the players. You know, it, it's a it's a whole package. Um, and I mentioned this I mentioned this over the weekend that continuity and I suppose you know it, it, it's it can't be taken for granted. The, 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 the I suppose the commitment and the effort that's required to sustain this. And you saw with Jim Gavin in, in Dublin, you know the the personal sacrifice you have to make to lead, you know this uh, a group and, and and as special as the group is, it it's uh, it doesn't lessen the the burden. Um, and that's what Limerick have had. I, and to say that you could have foreseen this, I couldn't have foreseen four in a row, no way, because the standard the standard of hurling I felt was was on the up. Uh, in 2018, I thought there was far more competitors. Uh, I thought there was far more teams coming. Slayer, particularly, uh, Cork were you know they really looked like they were coming in 2021. Uh, Chip after you know after a great start this year, I thought with Liam Cahill were were going to be in the shake up, uh, and Kilkenny are Kilkenny. So uh, I, I couldn't have seen this dominance, and uh, it's it's a it's it's an incredible reflection on the Limerick team that they've just found a way every single every single time. The semi-final and final victories uh, over the last couple of years. Um, I said last year's final, obviously, it ends up quite close, but it did feel like Limerick were mm. certainly the better team on the day. And um, uh, the the difference between the Croke Park games and the Munster games is it feels quite pronounced. Uh, certainly, some Munster hurling people that I was talking to last night were like, "Once they get out of Munster next year, that that's all they need to look after from this point forward, because that is such a dogfight." So then, this is, and I think you know, you mentioned it just before the break as well. Like, so to to get to a monster final means you get a break. Uh, you get two weeks to prepare for a monster final. Then you come out of the monster final. If you win the monster final, you get three weeks to prepare for an Ireland semi final. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, it's the turnaround of two weeks to a quarter final. But in the monster championship, it's week on week with a break week thrown in there in the middle. And it's it's exceptionally tough to to like the the Limerick Clare game in the Gaelic grounds was an evening game. Uh, it was for Clare. It was six days after they played Tipperary in Ennis. Um, for Limerick, it was an absolute dogfight against one of their you know, one of the most fiercest rivals over the last four years. Um, and to recover from that, then again in a in a six or seven day span, uh, and play another team. Uh, it's just a really difficult thing to do, uh, and the, the monster championship is, you know, and and there has been a little bit of eye rolling and the romanticising of of the monster championship, but it's just it's just that difficult. When Kilkenny won their four in a row, it was sometimes it was a sleepwalk through through the Leinster championship, and and it was a peak for uh, the All Ireland series of a semi final and final. If you can get to the semi-final, and I thought, and that's what I was really unsure about this year with Limerick, was the road that they'd have to go, whether it would be a qualifier route, whether it be a, you know a, a quarter-final route. They just benefit. They benefit from being together longer. They benefit as a team for gelling in terms of game plans and planning. That uh, the time, that the extra time they're able to give it for the semi-final, for the final. Uh, and they've more in the tank, uh, so it, it's it, it means a lot when you get to that, that the latter stages and you just have a breathe a bit of breathing space. Uh, so and it makes a huge difference. I think Kian Lynch referenced the the, the squad of thirty seven in his speech uh, yesterday, Seamus. And when you look at it, like if you'd said before the game, Hegarty would have a quiet enough game by his standards, like Gillan as well, Flanagan, compared to what we're used to seeing them uh, perform at. And then this is a team without Sean Finn and Declan Hannan as well, like. That makes it all the more remarkable. Like they're players who weren't involved maybe in previous years or games, and, and they're just stepping up. That really struck me after, so especially after the semi final. So I was I was of the opinion in the last, in last definitely in the last four years that Limerick's half forward line were absolutely crucial to everything that we did in terms of retention of puck out, in terms of the physicality around the middle, and Tom Morrissey and Garrod were like. You know, orchestrators in, in chief of the destruction around the middle third. At Limerick were so dominant there for I'd say I would say the previous three years. This year, Tom Morrissey has been fantastic um, for the Munster Championship. Really, really carried the line. I would say when when Keen and Garold weren't doing so well. Um, but you know, it, it, to, for Limerick to find a way, they have they have found a way in every single game. When questions have been asked in tight games, uh, in games when they've been again 
six points down against Galway. They could have been nine points down uh, with a goal chance for Galway. Uh, you know, the Kenny had two goal chances outside of the two that they got. Uh, Owen Cody flashed the ball wide in the first half that could have gone to the far post. He really did look sharp in the first half. You know, so they, they just, they're masters of finding a way. And this third quarter kick is 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 phenomenal to behold. Like it's uh, like the talk about the power that they bring, the, the, what Kyle Hayes and Dimmer Burns did from from the half back line was immense uh, in, in the 15 minutes after half time. And you know, just to, they, they continually they're like problem solvers. And, and John Kiley, you know, in fairness, he, he he's exceptionally humbling. He defers a lot of credit to the players. But to be fair, the players are masters at finding solutions to problems, uh, finding a way around the, 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 I suppose, the strategies and the, the different things that other teams throw at them, whether it was three around the middle at different times for Kilkenny yesterday or the same at Galway. Galway withdrew a half forward to midfield, clutter it up. You know, just find a way. And Peter Casey, you know, what an arc to see him to complete that, 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 that kind of that comeback after his five-point performance in 2021 against Cork and then to do his cruciate and then to come back and then five points from playing the second half yesterday. Like, you know, I, I always felt that with Hugh Lawler going to be on, on Galan that we needed somebody else to contribute. Whether I thought it was going to be maybe Seamus Flanagan, uh, but Peter Casey looked like he was coming in the semi-final against Galway, two points from play. Uh, and then, you know, what he did yesterday was like, it was ridiculous. He, he, he threw Mikey Butler off him. Uh, on the Hogan stand and you know, on the move, floated the ball over, and he's he's not a he's not a big striker, but he just he he, he was incredible, um, and and it was again different people have stood up at different times. It's truly a team sport, um, but you know it, it, it is it, the thirty seven that Keen referred to. It, it, it's in, it, as a player and a former player, I I know the training that they've done. I know. I know how important it is to to have good a good panel of players where your your seventeen, eighteen, nineteen on the on, on the B team will say and uh, playing the A team or pushing them and pushing them for their places, keeping them honest. Uh, and and I know I know that with the under twenty successes that we've had in the last couple of years as well, that that does bode well for the future. And Carl O'Neill's impact when he came on, Adam English, you know, there, there's lots of guys. So uh, we're very very fortunate there. We should talk a little bit about the first half because it, um, I actually think Kenny did really well. That, like, if you were going to be drawn up a template for causing Limerick trouble, it was being able to effectively have a short puck out, which meant that you can then, you know, move move Limerick around the place. They were hunting in packs. They were absolutely voracious in appetite and application, and uh, a lot of their players most of their big players were playing quite well they're getting Owen Cody into the game early and he's having success and that was maybe slightly different from the previous year they'd started well they hadn't allowed Garrod Hegarty to rampage through and score an all-time great goal and um, and I thought you know some of the the passing that Limerick had in that first half in particular the radar was just slightly off the touch was slightly off they looked a little bit flat like almost lethargic and maybe it was to do with the um, the setup from Kilkenny maybe it was to do with defending the wind the way they had to and maybe it was just a little bit of like okay let's wait and see exactly what happens here but in the midst of all that um, Keane Lynch's performance was as good I think in the first half as it was in the second half and that's why I would have made him man of the match it, we're, we're nitpicking here but, me too no 100% agree um, so, but, yeah, it's, it's just uh, so to your to your point then about how Kilkenny made him uncomfortable it it was. It really was the way Kilkenny set out their stall. Um, you could see a lot of the, you know, like like Tommy Tommy Walter referred to the short passing that that, that Limerick do, and that that you know sometimes you know as a traditionalist it's hard to watch. I find it hard to watch at times. Some of the some of the the short passing they do around the middle, it does open them up to turnovers, and especially on a rainy day, uh, and the elements against them. Uh, you know, Kilkenny's presence, they, they funneled everything into the middle third. Limerick didn't get a chance to get out wide much at all. Uh, and even when they did, uh, Tom Morrissey and Kyle Hayes linked up for a ball before Aaron Galan's first point. But they had to take they had to take three collisions before they could even deliver a ball to, to Galan. Uh, and they did well. So so it really it was exceptional um it was an ex- it was an exceptional execution of 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 going after the midfield uh, and, and half forward line. Now, listen, 
if, if you're going to do that against Limerick, you need to do that at the third quarter. Uh, it, it's more important to do it in the second half than it is in the first. As Galway so showed you, Kilkenny showed you, it's um, it, you know playing against playing against the breeze in the first half. Nicky Quaid's pockets just weren't going to go. Uh, and unlike you say the previous previous two years, where you'd see great like fierce movement in the Limerick half forward line, it was very static. Really, I noticed that. So, Dermot, Dermot, or David Reedy, Keen Lynch, Tom Morrissey, and Garou Hegarty, they were standing under puckouts uh, in the first half. And it's just, it's just not going to, you're not, you're not going to do that against quality teams. Uh, and then Kilkenny's set up for, for breaking ball. They won all the breaks, I would say, in the first half. So, just, they were hungry. They were, they were physical. Um, they played really, really well. Tom Feeling, I thought, was exceptional. Um, really, really, I was really nervous uh, watching uh, his performance in the first half. Particularly, he's got a super point in the second half as well. Um, but I suppose where where Keen gave us an anchor was his ability to retain possession. Like it's it's I don't know how I don't know how you describe his ability to get the ball from the ground into his hand in traffic in the messiest of situations. He's just a magician. Uh, and he did it yesterday at times crucial times when we were really struggling to get a foothold he was there on uh, getting possession taking tackles he's the one man that for Limerick particularly was able to kind of navigate the the mess the the point he set up for Tom Morrissey going into half time where he was able to dance between five Kilkenny players still get a hand pass over to Tom Tom got the score and was three points down at half time that was big so you're only one score down at half time instead of being four points down or even six uh, as they were four minutes earlier. So, you know, I, I do think Keane is, is critical. His vision is next level. He gave Darrell Donovan scored a point in the second half to go three points up for Limerick. And Keane, he couldn't get up a hand pass to, to, to hand. There was just too many people around him. So he literally just flung it back 10 yards behind him to where he knew there was green shirts and split two Kilkenny players. And then Darrell was able to, to put it over. He, he it, In Declan's absence, I thought his leadership was was was, was huge. Uh, and it was necessary because Kilkenny were, were really threatening to, 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 to stretch away in, in the first half. So yourself and Jared agree on Keane Lynch's man of the match. I think Peter Casey got the official uh, man of the match last night on, on telly. Uh, I think the Sunday game panel opted for Kyle Hayes as, as their hurler of the year. Seamus, who would your, your own pick for hurler of the year be? I think it's. So I think I, I think it'd be very. I, I'd be very hard to take it off Aaron Galan. My, my I, I listen. And I I love Kyle Hayes. I I love how he plays the game. I think he was again exceptional. Like uh, he's been a nominee for her year. I think twice in the last in the last four years as well. Uh, but but when Limerick weren't playing great, Aaron Galan. Uh, from from the, all the way through the Munster Championship was exceptional against Galway. He was exceptional. Um, I, I don't know how you I don't know how you take it off Barclay, uh, because he really was the, the, the like in a, such a tight Munster Championship. If Aaron doesn't play as well as he does, if he doesn't score the goals he does, uh, Limerick don't make it to make, don't make it out of that. So um, from a from a full year's perspective. Um, I think Aaron but, but you know when you look at Kyle's performance yesterday in closing out his performance against Galway you know he's a special special talent um, but you know <laughs> if it's if it's a Limerick man at the end of the day for me it's, 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 a, good, it's a good decision so yeah um, Seamus I, I I, I'm almost loath to ask this final question to you I, because everybody from Limerick was just enjoying the moment and um, you know, uh, it's, it's very important that we do all slow down and take a breath. However, the team is so good, it's impossible not to think about the history and where they could go and to just have a little daydream about this might not stop for a while. So what what's the ceiling? Do they Are they chasing a five? Are they chasing the dubs? So there is no ceiling uh, because the reality is so Aaron Galan is 26. Um, you know, Kyle Hayes is, is, is 25. Uh, you know, a lot of the key figures in this Limerick team are nowhere near thirty. Uh, so, you know, the, the reality is that, and I, I, like I'm, I'm guilty of being nervous uh, and and been slightly doubtful and and been kind of scared by Limerick history. And it, it was nearly too good to be true true for so long. And uh, you know, anybody that asked me even for the game yesterday, I was I was nuts uh, because you know, again, Munster had been come so hard, and because we were we were being brought back to the pack in a lot of games. Uh, and playing to the level, I would say, of, of the opposition rather than, than what we were capable of. 
uh, and injuries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I didn't know. I didn't see. I, 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 I didn't believe that that performance in the second half was possible against a team as good as Kilkenny. Um, so you know, when they produced, when they produced what they produced on Sunday, you know, it's it's hard it's hard to to say that you know anybody's going to stop them until they're stopped. And that's one of the I suppose the most honest things I can say is until they're beaten, they're the best. Uh, and you know, for me. The, the the limit the limit is 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 is, is endless really uh, until somebody gets it together whether it's Kilkenny or whether it's Clare or whether it's Tipperary or Cork or Galway you know someone has to take them down uh, yeah. and and Limerick have shown that they're very they're very adaptable so uh, it's uh, it's 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 uh, it's really it's good to dream Limerick yeah exactly enjoy the daydreams but enjoy the reality too because the reality is pretty awesome Seamus great stuff <laughs> thanks a million thanks man bye. 